Anthony's from Agora's developer relations team. And in this video, we'll walk through how to create an Agora token server using Node.js and Express. I'll show you how to set up an Express server, install the Agora access token package, and create a token server that can serve back a token given a user's ID and role. Let's start by creating a new folder. We'll call it Agora token server. Then we'll open up a terminal window at that folder. Here we'll do an npm init. We can use all the defaults for now. If you'd like to put your name into the author category, feel free. Also, let's use an MIT license for this. Everything looks good. We'll hit OK. And then we'll do npm install express to add the express module. And then we'll do an npm install Agora access token. And this will install the Agora access token node module. Okay, from there, let's open up our folder in our favorite code editor. We'll check out the package.json. You can see our main file is an index.js, so let's go and create that index.js file. In the index.js, we're going to create a constant called express and require the express node module. From the Agora access token, we're going to require the RTC token builder and RTC role objects. So let's create two constants for them. And once again, we'll require them from the Agora access token. Next, we'll create our port. So we'll set a constant for port. I like 8080, but you can choose any port number you prefer. Next, we're going to create constants for our app ID and our app certificate. For security reasons, I like to use environment variables for these. But if you don't know how to set up environment variables or you'd like to just use a string, you can just add your app ID and app certificate as strings in these variables. And then we're going to create the app and instantiate the express object. Next, we'll create a no-cache function. And what this will do is it'll add a couple of response headers to ensure that the browser invalidates and doesn't cache the token. So we're always serving a fresh token with every request. Since we'll be chaining this function with one more, we're going to add the next method. So we ensure that we call the next method in the uh, chain. Then we're going to create a constant for our generate access token function. For right now, let's just set up a placeholder passing in the request and the response. Uh, we'll come back and we'll fill this in a little bit later. Let's finish creating our express app. So next, we're going to set up our get endpoint, saying app.get then entering the endpoint that we want along with the functions that will trigger once we hit that endpoint. Last, we're going to add the app.listen, pass our port in, and then within the callback, uh, within the callback, we'll add a console log just to let you know that 
know, we're listening on this port. Now that we've got all our basics down for our basic express web service, let's start with our generate access token. We'll outline all our steps. So first we'll set the response header, then we're going to get the channel name, followed by the UID and the role. We also can't ex forget the expiration time for the token. Then we're going to build the token, and lastly, we're going to return the token. So, Within our response header, we're going to allow a simple um, access control allow origin to all, so we don't get any cores errors. Then we're going to want to get our channel name. The channel name is pretty important, so we're going to make it a constant. We use the request.query to get the query parameter for the channel name. Now we're going to need to check if the channel name was properly passed. So let's check if channel name is not defined we're going to need to throw an error. So let's return response.status500 and we'll make the JSON say error channel is required. Okay, next let's get the UID. Since the UID is a little more flexible we can say let UID equal request.query.uid. Now, if the UID is not defined, we don't really care as much. So if it's not defined or it's empty, we're going to give it a value of zero. For the role, Let's start off by giving everyone a role of subscriber. And now we'll also want to check and see, did we pass in a query param for a role? So let's say request.query.role. And we only really care about one role, and that's publisher. Everyone else can be a subscriber. So if the query parameter is equal to publisher, let's set the role equal to publisher. Next, let's set up our expiration time. So we'll say let expire time equal request dot query dot expire time. So here again, we're going to want to check if the expire time was not uh, defined or possibly even empty. In both cases, we're going to want to default to 3600, which is about an hour. Otherwise, uh, because our role or our expire time is passed as a string, we're going to want to parse it as an int to make sure that it's passed correctly. We also have one more step. Now that we have this expiration time, we have to calculate the privilege expiration time. So even though we want our tokens to be valid for one hour, the privilege expiration time is based on uh, the time since 1970. So to do the calculation, we're going to need to get the current time, and then we're going to add it to our prior time. And this is going to give us our privilege expire time. Next, we're going to build our token. So we're going to say constant token equals RTC builder dot build token with UID. Um, and then we're going to pass in the app ID 
the app certificate, the channel name, the UID, the role, and the privilege expiration time. I'll give that a minute so you can see, make sure we're passing in all the correct information. Next, we're going to return our token. So we're going to say response.json. We're going to give our response a key of token. And then for the value, we'll pass the value of the token. Now we're ready to test our service. Let's open up our package.json and add a start script. So we're going to add a comma, add the keyword start, and then say node index.js. Then we're going to click over to our terminal window and say npm start. Now you should see we're listening on port 8080, so it looks like everything started well. Let's open up our favorite web browser. I'll use Safari for simplicity's sake. Let's first check our localhost 8080 slash access token. Good, we see the proper error message for channel is required. Now let's add our channel name. We see a token, great. Now let's check with if we add in a user role. Great, it's still working. Let's add in a UID, awesome. And let's check with our expire time. Looks like everything's working.